The films focused on in this video took various approaches in attempting to realistically portray childhood from the beginning of the Soviet Union to the end of it. The first approach is the documentary style of film, as used in Giga Vertov's Man with a Movie Camera. This film has little or no plot and focuses mainly on the everyday lives of inhabitants of a city in the earliest Soviet era, the time when things were good and a happy city was a realistic idea. The children depicted are considered to be unaware of the cameraman and therefore acting naturally. Vertov also uses long shots and few cuts to reinforce the feeling of the viewer's presence in the scene and decrease any fictional seeming effect. That said, however, Vertov has edited his images to paint a beautiful but very romanticized picture of childhood. None of these children are unhappy, even a sleeping homeless child looks content. These images do an excellent job of showing viewers the happy side of childhood, but to truly have a semblance of real life, Vertov would need to include the less beautiful side of growing up, all the sadder, stressful times that can make childhood a challenge. Also, the images here are overly pretty. The children watching the magic show are all adorable, and the soccer players are perfect examples of young athletes. All children and youths are not always so perfect, and Vertov would have done well to show that. He does an excellent job of showing the happy side of a realistic childhood, but not of a complete one. Little Vera, a film by Vasily Pichul, takes an entirely different approach. As a fictional film, Little Vera has more of a license to stretch the bounds of what growing up is like. However, one could argue that it does a better job of it than Man with a Movie Camera, which was ostensibly a documentary did. Pichul, through his main character Vera, shows viewers a troubled young adulthood and how easy it is for people that age to ruin things for themselves and others. Because Little Vera is a color film, he was able to employ a color palette that reflected the despondency of most of the film. Reds, grays, and washed out colors emphasize the lack of joy in their lives. Plot-wise, they are happy scenes, certainly, but most of them involve alcohol or drugs. Pichul paints a dark and depressing picture of youth here, one in which there is no way to escape aside from alcohol and drugs, and the youth have no respect for their elders, who are always there for their children. This film, quite possibly beyond the state of the Soviet Union, reflects the hopelessness that gripped the nation towards the end of the USSR when this film is set. The youth have nowhere to go, and that isn't just because of their flaws. It's also because the country was going nowhere and was struggling to even keep itself together. This clear message of doom and gloom may add a tinge of fiction to the film because of its blatant metaphorism, but at the same time, Little Vera feels more real than films that simply ignore all the trials happening both in the wider world and in its characters' teenage years, and therefore succeeds in that respect. Ivan's Childhood by Andrei Tarkovsky is a fine example of the third method of childhood depiction, looking through the lens of the child's imagination. Of all three films, special effects were most obvious here, but because of the dream aspect, it was perfectly reasonable. Tarkovsky, like Pichul, also uses light and color to his advantage. The film is composed almost entirely of grays and browns, in addition to the off-present darkness. Ivan's dreams are either very bright or very dark, further emphasizing his sharply contrasting imagination. The imaginary adventures of childhood must oftentimes be a form of escape. When things are difficult in a child's life, they often find solace in the things that are real only in their minds. Ivan leaves a harrowing existence as a spy in the war, something no child should have to do. His family is entirely dead, yet he escapes his real life with vivid dreams in which he can see them again and really be a child. He can never fully escape the war, though. His imaginings and games are deeply stained by the horrors he's witnessed. When, in the only scene in which we really see him play, he imagines himself trying to save people who were killed, viewers realize the full extent to which Ivan is scarred. Tarkovsky uses this film as a criticism of World War II and the destruction it caused the USSR, both physically and mentally. Only by seeing the innermost thoughts of a participant does this destruction become fully apparent. Thus Yvonne's dreams and imaginings can be frightening, hopeful, or inconceivably sad, and oftentimes all of those. And though these imaginary sequences are clearly not real, the concept behind them is very much so, and, because they show both the light and dark side of the character, make Yvonne feel much more like a real person than any of the happy children in Man with a Movie Camera or Vera ever did.